Welcome, you guys. $1,000, 1500 1500 This is Scott Scale 965 2023. This is Merida Big 9 Lite Pro 2023. And for 1000 bucks, I bought Merida Big 9 Lite 500. Why these bikes? Mm, the plan was to buy three bikes, three hardtails for about $1,500 for a beginner, but also for entry level racing. These bikes are capable for racing. You know from the title already that Scott Scale lost this challenge here, but this will be the most capable bike in the terrain. And it has a feature which you cannot buy for this or this bike. Let's see what is it or what it is. Let's start with the bike stand and the scale. 1000 bucks hardtail, alloy frame, Big 9 light, 500, two by drivetrain. It weighs 13.9 kilograms or 28.86 pounds. $1,500 bike, Big 9 light Pro will give us 12.23, that's, that's awesome. In pounds, 26.98. So 27 pounds. And then Scott scale 965, 13.5 kilograms or 29.84. So 30, yeah, 30, 30 pounds. Let's just quickly see the components. Of course, all three bikes have aluminum frame, alloy cockpit and the seat post. And here we have Diori 2 by 11 drivetrain, a very, good drivetrain. Uh, it has Manitou Mark IV fork, which is really good. And Tektro brakes. So this was, uh, this was the budget thing on the bike, but these brakes just break. They were okay on the single tracks. Then this Merida Big Nine Lite Pro has XT derailleur, SLX cassette, Shimano uh, cranks it, so this is one by 12. It also has money to mark or fork and two fingers brakes, Shimano. We should be braking with one finger only. And then Scott Scale 965 has SLX instead of XT derailleur, Diori instead of SLX cassette, non Shimano crank set, this is Praxis, and it has these long levers on the hydraulic brakes. So these are, I think these are MT200, but the tires are 2.4. Maxis Recon, Ra Recon Race, unlike the Icon 2.2 on both uh, Meridas and the rims are wide. But let's be fair, Scott Scale has lost this competition, not only because it's got this RockShox, Judy, Ella Stommer, riding kind of thing. It lost because it's so much heavier than those two bikes. And it is heavier because it's got the progressive geometry and even more, I would say this is the down country hardtail. So what's the difference? I've said both bikes, progressive Scott scale, non-progressive old school, maybe not old school, non-progressive Merida big nine, the rear end ends at the same point. And as you can see, scale is longer. You can also see that the fork doesn't have as steep angle as on the Merida. That's because this is progressive frame. So what it means, the front triangle of the progressive Scott scale is about two centimeters, which is uh, about 1.5 inch longer than the Merida. Both are large uh, size bikes. And to compensate for a longer um, reach, we have shorter stem, and a steeper C-tube angle by 1.5 uh, degree comparing to the Merida, so that the saddle versus handlebars position will be pretty much the same. So we still have nice climbing position. We put uh, the center of our gravity in between uh, two uh, wheels with no problem on the progressive bike, but it's longer, which means it will be more stable, uh, more predictable, and the head tube angle, which is 67.5 on the scale and 70 on the Merida, means that this fork 
puts the wheel even further away from mass, which is more stable, more stability, and also you will feel more secure learning to ride steep descents. The question is, does a mountain biker who buys an entry-level hardtail think about riding aggressive stuff, thinking about progressive geometry, or they will want to have some hardtail which is easier to maneuver, especially single track switchbacks. If your wife has problems taking uh, switchbacks on the single tracks, she will have even more problems on the progressive geometry. Uh, so is it worse, is it better? It's different. If you want to have, if you want to ride more aggressively, you want to improve your um, riding style, I would go for the progressive one. Because the frame is longer and Scott just went all out with this bike, putting 2.4 inch tires on it with wide rims, it's so much heavier. So it's, it's not worse, it's different. The tires on the scale have about 58, 59 millimeters uh, of the width. That's a lot. That gives us 2.3 inches. And Merida has about 55 millimeters or 2.1, 2.2 inch of the width. And this width change makes a lot of difference. Here we have more air volume, which means you can use lower tire pressure on the Scott scale. And especially on the rear end, this is hardtail, where you don't have any suspension, it's does give you a better comfort. You feel the difference between this bike and that bike. Of course, wider tires will not ride as well on the mat as those thinner tires, but overall, I would say, better traction and better compliance will be something that you notice on the Scott scale. And let's add to it that those wide rims are tubeless ready. That means you can get rid of the inner tube, put here the tubeless valve, put some sealant in, and you're riding tubeless on this bike. So yes, it will be heavier, but it will ride better. But Danny, is this Judy fork that bad? Yeah, it is. I don't, I don't really think it has 100 millimeters of travel. It's got the remote control, so the lockout is fine, but it feels kind of elastomer. None of us testing this bike liked it. And the thing with this marker is that I always pump much more pressure into it than it's suggested on the sticker here. So it's not according to the weight of my body because it's so linear. It, it works beautifully, but it's so linear. I feel like I would want to have a little bit more stiffness going like 50% into the travel. But yes, it works much better than Judy. It does. So the scale has lost it, not because it got less points in this test, it was just a feeling, you know? I was the third one testing scale. First it was Martin and Philip. I was the third one. Uh, so we were doing the same loop on the single tracks for the third time and I was saying, hey guys, this loop seems longer now. And they both said, scale. And after a couple of minutes, uh, I said, I thought this was the last corner to the straight to the parking lot. And they said, and they said scale. So yeah. It felt longer, it felt longer. These Meridas were going beautifully through those single tracks, but it's not a worse bike. And if your buddies will be making fun of you that you paid the same amount of money as they paid for the Merida and you have 1.2 kilograms heavier bike, you can say the best riders will appreciate the progressive geometry instead of the weight. That's it. $1,000 Merida front wheel, 2,055 grams, the rear wheel 2,800 with the cassette, 1,500 bucks Merida Big 9 Lite Pro, front wheel 1,900, rear wheel with 12 speed cassette 2,680, Scott scale rear wheel very heavy, 3 kilos 135 grams which is 7 pounds, front 2,330. And that's really it. Thank you for watching. See you guys.